So here's our glycocalyx layer, and then here's the fimbriae. Remember, the fimbriae are uh, hair-like appendages that allow adhesion um, and stuff like that. So they're not the pili, though. So the pili is longer than a fimbriae. So bacteria, as I mentioned in our diagram, also have flagellum, which allows for movement. This is an appendage that's specialized um, for, for movement, for motility. Um, about half of all prokaryotes are uh, able to do what's called taxis. So that's the movement toward or away from a stimulus. So for instance, you know, chemotaxis is the movement away or toward uh, a particular chemical signal. Um, they, they may move towards nutrients or oxygen in positive chemotaxis. So you call that positive chemotaxis. Or they may move away from a, a toxic substance, and that's called negative chemotaxis. Um, and the way that chemotaxis is performed is that it it is done or carried out using what's called a flagella. So the, the most common way that bacteria move is using a flagella. And so sometimes flagella can be scattered all over the entire surface of the cell, or sometimes they're concentrated in one area of the cell like we see here, where there's multiple flagella coming out of one side of the cell. Um, so Prokaryotic flagella are different from eukaryotic flagella. They're, for one thing, about one-tenth the width. And also, prokaryotic flagella are not covered by the plasma membrane. In eukaryotic cells that have flagella, the plasma membrane actually covers the entire um, flagella here. So that that is one difference um, between them. So. Eukaryotic cells have flagella, prokaryotic cells have flagella, and archaea also have flagella, and they are all very distinct from one another. And so what that, what that suggests is, or what evidence indicates, is that all three of these flagella evolved independent of one another. So something that's also characteristic of prokaryotic cells is they don't contain these um, compartments with inside of the cell, such as chloroplasts or mitochondria or lysosomes. Um, but some that doesn't mean that bacteria, for instance, because they don't have a chloroplast, can't do something like photosynthesis. Or because they don't have a mitochondria, it doesn't mean that they can't do cellular respiration. It just means that the apparatus to carry out this, for instance, the apparatus to carry out cellular respiration in bacteria is part of this infolded membrane here. So they don't have a designated partitioned um, organelle inside of them like a chloroplast or a mitochondria to do these functions but instead they have infolded portions of the plasma membrane or cell membrane in which these different things can take place so on the left you're seeing the respiratory membranes so these are the this is the membrane that would carry out something like cellular respiration something that in humans or eukaryotic cells is carried out inside of the mitochondria inside of the cell but in bacteria, it's carried out by these respiratory membranes, which are actually parts of the cell membrane that have infolded inside of the cell. The same thing is true for something like photosynthesis. Bacteria can do photosynthesis, but they don't have a chloroplast inside of their cell. Instead, they have these thylakoid membranes, which are actually infolded parts of the plasma membrane. Okay, so in terms of the genome of bacteria, this is also our prokaryotes. This is also another defining characteristic. Prokaryotic cells have a single circular chromosome. So they have a they have a large chromosome. It is one chromosome and it is a circle. So if you imagine the chromosome is just this 
portion like this one circle inside of there. Now what you're looking at this cell here has been lysed. All of this stuff that is spilled out here is the circle sing single circular chromosome. So this single circular chromosome is characteristic of, of uh, prokaryote, prokaryotic cells. That's in contrast to something like a eukaryote, which has um, linear chromosomes and will have multiple pairs of them. So the DNA or that single circular chromosome is located in a region of the cell called a nucleoid region. So unlike eukaryotic cells where the DNA or the chromosomes are contained within inside of a nucleus. In prokaryotic cells, there is no nucleus, but there's a, a region of the cell that, where the DNA can be found. In addition to this single circular chromosomes, bacteria or prokaryotic cells will have smaller chromosomes. That doesn't really look smaller than the other ones, but you get the idea. They'll have accessory um, rings or smaller rings of independently replicating DNA molecules, and these are called plasmids. So that's what, what these are here. So in addition to that single circular chromosome, they have these smaller rings of DNA that replicate on their own. Um, most of them only carry a few genes. So let's write that in there. Most of them only contain a few genes on them. So DNA replication, transcription, and translation, um, these processes, processes are fundamentally similar in prokaryotes, prokaryotes and eukaryotes, although some of the details are a little bit different. Um, prokaryotic ribosomes, for instance, are slightly smaller than eukaryotic ribosomes, and they differ in the, their protein and RNA con content. And these differences uh, between uh, eukaryotic ribosomes and prokaryotic ribosomes allow for certain antibiotics like erythromycin and tetracycline um, to actually be able to bind to the ribosomes of bacteria and disrupt DNA synthesis and not bind to the ribosomes found in eukaryotic cells. So it's kind of an interesting perspective on, on the differences here. So if we continue forward here, we talk about replication in, in, in bacteria. Most prokaryotes can reproduce um, fairly quickly in favorable environments. Um, and most prokaryotes can do this by a process of binary fission. Um, so this is just basically one cell dividing into two cells, uh, which then those two cells will divide into two cells each, meaning now you have four cells. And those four cells will all divide, and now you have eight cells, and eight cells, 16, and so on. So under optimal conditions, most prokaryotes can reproduce in one to three hours. Some can reproduce in as little as 20 minutes. So that's quite rapid. When you think about that, um, if you think about that rate of reproduction, a single prokaryotic cell could give rise to a colony that weighs more than the earth in only two days if, if they had uninterrupted favorable conditions um, because that becomes exponential growth. So bacteria can um, do some interesting things in terms of um, DNA. For instance, they can take up DNA from the external environment. So that's called transformation. So transformation is where a bacterial cell can actually take up DNA from the environment from maybe say a cell, a bacterial cell that was close to it and that bacterial cell ruptures and then they could take in that DNA from the environment. So if we look at our drawing board here, so transformation is this one bacterial cell, and they don't necessarily have to be the same species. If you have one cell that maybe ruptures like this, and the DNA from that cell goes out into the environment around that cell, 
this living cell here can actually take that DNA, that foreign DNA, and incorporate it into its own chromosome. That's called transformation. There's another type of genetic recombination called transduction, and this involves what's called a bacterial phage. And so what a bacterial phage is, is a virus that attacks bacteria. And so what this virus does, so this is a bacterial phage here. And so bacterial phage will attack a virus. They will inject their own DNA into the bacteria. And what happens is that causes disruption inside of the bacterial cell. And essentially what they do is that bacteria becomes a bacteria phage factory. And so it basically hijacks the replication system inside of that bacteria and it gets that bacteria to make more bacterial phages as you can see in this picture here. And then eventually that bacterial cell will burst and those bacterial phages will be released into the environment where those bacterial phages will go on to affect other bacteria. Now sometimes when it hijacks this bacteria cell and gets it to make more bacterial phages, accidents occur and some of this, we'll call this bacteria 1, some of bacteria 1 accidentally gets put into the bacteria phage and that bacteria phage is released into the environment and it goes to hijack another bacteria cell and it injects bacteria 1's DNA into bacteria 2 here, and then bacteria 2 doesn't get taken over and made into a, ba into a bacterial phage factory, and instead it incorporates the DNA from bacteria 1 into its own DNA, and it becomes what's called a genetic recombinant. So bacteriophages are really the, they're kind of the, um, vector or the vessel for which this DNA exchange occurs. The next type of um, genetic recombination that takes place in bacteria is called conjugation. And this is where one bacteria transfers um, DNA through a sex pilus to another bacteria. So Prokaryotes, as I mentioned, reproduce fairly rapidly. They have prokaryotes because of their rapid, um, rapid reproduction. They have considerable genetic variation. And if you remember back to chapter um, 22 and 23, that in order for um, natural selection to occur, in order for evolution to occur, there has to be genetic variation. Um, the diverse adaptations that we see in prokaryotes suggest that their populations must have considerable genetic variation. And in fact, um, bacterial populations do have considerable genetic variation. Um, there's, there's three factors essentially that, that give rise to the high levels of genetic diversity in, in bacteria. The first is that rapid reproduction. So they have rapid reproduction through binary fission. Another is that they have mutations. And these mutations, because of this rapid reproduction, these mutations occur at higher rates compared to things like eukaryotic cells. And then the third thing that, that uh, is why bacteria have um, considerable or high levels of genetic diversity is because of what we just talked about. They can undergo genetic recombination through transformation, through transduction, and through genetic uh, and through conjugation. Transduction. and through um, conjugation, which we'll look at in a second. 